Hey there Stationeers and welcome back to Mimus. If you haven't seen this base before, if this is the first video you're seeing, you'll find a link to the playlist down below, which will show you how we put all of this together. But today's focus is going to be this guy, the gas fuel generator. We're going to learn how to power it, how to fuel it, and how to cool it. Now, as the tooltip on the right there suggests, the gas fuel generator requires an atmosphere of 20 kilopascals to function. Doesn't matter what kind of gas it is, as long as the pressure is correct. There's no maximum, just a minimum. Something to keep in mind. We also have to keep it between 5 and 55 Celsius. That's 278 to 238 Kelvin. If those conditions aren't met, it'll simply just turn itself off and you don't get no power. It's got four ports. We've got the power output going to my station batteries all the way down there. We have got a exhaust port. Oh, I went a little far there. The exhaust comes out the side here and we've just got that running to a vent. Just dump it into space, who cares? Uh, we've got the fuel input over here on the left and we've got data on the left over here at the front. This is the full collection of everything you're going to need to build the gas fuel generator in this setup. We're going to be using the standard logic chips rather than using IC circuits, so no advanced coding knowledge needed for this tutorial. We'll be going step by step and you'll find a full shopping list of all of these items linked in the description below. Now, as the name implies, the gas fuel generator requires fuel to function. Also, by the way, sorry about the fan noise in the background. Uh, ironically enough, I'm recording this during a power blackout and my home batteries are really struggling to keep up with the power demands on this computer. So, you know, there's a little bit of fan noise keeping him cool. Anyway, we're going to run our fuel line over here. This comes out of this little pipe over here, which runs underground to my fuel mixing setup. We've got volatiles, we've got nitrous, and we've got a mix of the two in this pipe. Very small pressure, we can mix some more up later if we need it. But the gas fuel generator will consume as much fuel as you give it, so we kind of, we're going to want to throttle that, right? And in order to do that, we're going to use our first device, the pressure regulator. We're, in fact, we're going to be using two of these in this build. And let's color code it, because for some reason you can't spray paint these ahead of time. There we go, that's now a fuel regulator. This is going to work exactly like a throttle in a car. Uh, we're going to lower the amount of gas we put into the gas fuel generator. We're going to set it to 0, 0,1, which is a one-tenth of a kilopascal or 100 pascals. Uh, you have to use a comma, not a period. It won't save the period. It'll just set it to 0, by the way. All right, let's turn this guy on and then we can connect it up to power. Pressure regulators are really handy for this sort of task because they allow you to set the pressure in front of the pipe and it acts like a one-way valve. So nothing in here can end up back here. There we go, it's turned on. And so we should see, if I've done this correctly, yes, we should see 100 kilopascals, or 100 pascals, sorry, of fuel in there at a comfy three degrees Celsius. Let's also put a pipe meter down over here. This is optional. This is just so I can see the fuel I've got in the line at a glance. Makes life a little bit easier. All right, the next thing we need to do is build a little house for this thing to live in. If we're going to keep an atmosphere, we can't exactly have it exposed to space now, can we? So we're going to put some iron walls down around it, put some iron walls on the ceiling and on the side. And then I think we'll finish it up with some windows so that we can see what's going on inside. Some iron sheets just to seal in all the flavor, and we're off to the races. Now, we're not going to finish building the windows just yet because we still have to get in here, but now we need to start setting up the atmospherics. So now we've got a box to put the atmosphere in, let's get the atmosphere in. To do that, we're going to use a set of vents. We're going to use active vents and a passive vent. The passive vent is going to allow air into the system. The active vents are going to be used to pull it out of the system when the pressure gets too high. We're going to set them to inward so they pull air in. And don't worry about turning them on and off. We're going to do that with logic. All right, let's start by getting this all wired up. And let's just do a quick test. Yes, indeed, we are able to turn those on. But now we need to connect the actual gas to this thing. In order to do that, I'm going to tap into my super duper cold nitrogen line over here. If you'd like to see how we built this, you can check it out in the previous episode in this playlist. But we've got uh, nitrogen at 1.5 megapascals at negative 124 Celsius. That is a very, very cold gas. So we're going to run this into our active vents over here and basically pipe it all together. All right, so now our active vents are going to be able to pull air from this space back into this very cold line. And then what we're going to want to do is then push the air from the cold line out this vent. So hopefully we can get a bit of sort of convection going. 
air will flow from this vent over the furnace and then back through these when the pressure gets too high. It all makes sense once the logic comes in. Now we're going to control the flow of air into the chamber using two devices and they're going to be running at the same time but achieving different tasks. The first one is going to be this pressure regulator, same as we did with the fuel. This one's purpose though is to push only the minimum amount of air we need in this chamber. We saw that this thing has to have at minimum 20 kilopascals of pressure. So we're going to set up a pressure regulator, which will guarantee that no matter what else we're doing, we've got 20 kPa in there. So at least we can turn the thing on, right? Let's go ahead and set that value. This is going to be 20 kPa, and that's going to be our minimum value for this setup. But that's not the only step. We then also need to use this volume pump over here to force coolant into the chamber when it gets too hot. The gas fuel generator puts a lot of heat into the environment it's in, and we need to control that. For now, we're going to turn it all the way down and turn it on just so that it uh, we don't have to worry about that. And then we're going to pipe it all up. So we'll throw it at a T-junction right over here. These both need to draw from the same cold line. And you don't have to use nitrogen, by the way. Just don't use a flammable gas. That's the that's sort of my only uh, advice. Although, don't, rather, don't use a flammable gas mixture. There we go. So the way we pipe this up is really straightforward. Let me explain it again. We've got a whole bunch of nitrogen that's ice cold right back here, okay? We're going to allow 20 kilopascals of it into this area as much as it needs, as often as it needs it, and this is always going to be on, meaning that we will at always, at any given time, have a minimum of 20 kilopascals of pressure in there. Then we're going to use the volume pump to push more air than that into there if the temperature gets too high. This gas is very cold, so by pushing more in, we'll reduce the temperature in the chamber. Either way, let's go ahead and get this piped up so that it starts working. go all wired up and you'll see we're going to start pushing gas out of this vent which we don't really want to do uh, we've now got nitrogen just kind of floating in the atmosphere and that's because we're allowing it through that vent so for now we're just going to turn this off but we know that system is working all right before we can seal in everything here we need to set up a bit of a monitoring system so that we know what the conditions are inside of this box once we've closed it off in order to do that, we're going to have to put in some glass so that we can uh, seal this and we have a structure to build on. And we're going to grab our consoles. These can be printed at the Tier 1 electronics printer. All of this stuff is all Tier 1, by the way. And we're going to put a couple of them over there in the console monitor format. You see they've got these empty spots. That's used for these, the gas display chips. We then just put some glass in there, close it off. And there we go, we've got our gas displays. We'll set one to pressure and the other to temperature. Let's wire those together. All right, there we go. But now, how do we know what the temperature actually is inside this room? We've got no sensors, so that's what we need to add next. We're going to go ahead and grab a gas sensor, and we're just going to stick it anywhere that fits, really. It doesn't actually matter all that much, although you do want it kind of close to the, uh, to the gas fuel generator. Now, I happen to know that there's a, a wire right behind me here, so why don't we just wire this in? like so there we go and now we've got access to our gas sensor let's close that in again and we can turn these on they're going to flash an error because they haven't been configured in order to configure them you have to use the data disk you spawn in with this thing in the lander we're going to stick that in the side and we're going to say okay you mr monitor you are going to talk to the gas sensor and you're going to read pressure pull that out it's zero kilopascals because there's nothing in there that's what we want to see you are going to read temperature and you are going to talk to the gas sensor. Thank you so much. There we go. There's one more thing we want to be aware of before we close this all up, and that is the power draw or the power production of this thing. So we're going to put together a little LED display, just a small one right over there, and this will display the power in watts that the gas fuel generator is producing. We're going to use... I, where do we come up? I think we'll come up from over here. By the way, you can just stick your head through windows in this game. It's very funny. There we go, and we will wire that straight in. Now we can turn that on, and voila, we get a reading of zero. What? Why is that? Well, it's because unlike the console monitors, there's no chip you can just put in to show power. We're going to have to do some dreaded logic in order to work it out. We need to use a logic reader to pull information out of the system, and then a logic writer to attach that information to an item in the system, right? This will all make sense once we start putting it together. Before you do anything else, you've got to wire these all up and remember to connect every single one of the data ports. Uh, for the logic readers and writers, there's only three. So you just got to do the sides. There we go. Okay, cool. That's all wired up. 
So now what we can do is we can grab a screwdriver and we can say, okay, you, Mr. Logic Reader. Let's actually, you know what? Let's give him a name as well. That'll make this easier to understand. You're going to be the power reader. You're going to be the power writer. You are going to be our temperature display. You're going to be the pressure display. And you're going to be the power display. So, our logic reader is going to read the power generation value from the gas fuel generator itself. We're going to grab it from this, and the variable we want to read is power generation. Very specifically, not just power, but power generation. There we go, we can turn that on. Right now we see the power generation is zero. Well, no surprises, it's not doing anything. Then our logic writer, we want it to take in the value it's gotten from the power reader. We want to then send that value to the power display, that one over there, and we want to put it on the setting mode. That will just that'll tell it, you know, what numbers to oh god, I <laughs> threw my screwdriver. That'll tell it what numbers to put on the screen. Now we can't actually turn this thing on because we've managed to hide the switch from ourselves. So there's one more piece of logic we can use to help with that. We grab another logic I.O. kit and we scroll over until we get the logic writer switch, this thing over here. I've already painted it red so that you know it's important. Then we grab some more cable. You're going to need a lot of cable to do this sort of stuff. And we attach this to the network as well. Boom. Okay, so this is all linked up. Now we got to use our screwdriver to tell it what to do. So we want this thing to talk to the gas fuel generator. And it's going to change its on setting. We turn it on. And now if I click the button, boom, you'll see it turns on for the briefest of seconds. Click the button again and it turns on once more. And you can see we produced about a kilowatt of power very briefly there. All right, so what's the next thing we need to do? Well, we need to get some air into this room and then start heating it up so that our generator just works. This is the longest part of the process if you're using cold gas to prime it. I probably wouldn't advise that if you're starting from scratch. Uh, there is one thing we could try. I've got some, uh, some nice warm nitrogen in my backpack. I wonder if I could just drop that in there and open that up. Was that not going to work for me? We could do it like that. Can I, can I, can I hit the trigger? Maybe if I can get it to fall and just, it's kind of clipping into the ground there. Nope, that's not what I want. Oh, hold on. Maybe I can get it. All right, cool. We opened it up and we've put 61 kilopascals of pressure in that room. That's perfect. That's going to work just fine. Uh, let me just go get some more nitrogen because it's going to keep complaining. All right, that saves us a lot of time because otherwise we'd have to push a whole bunch of cold gas in there and that wouldn't have worked out for us very well. Would have taken forever to warm it up. You can't just turn the generator on and off and it will slowly but surely warm it up. All right, but now we can see the pressure is at 60 kPa. Way too much for that room. We need it to be 20. And the temperature is at 5.7, which is actually just enough to turn the generator on. So I can turn it on and you'll see it's just going to run, but the room's going to heat up really quickly and the pressure is going to increase. All right, so let's turn it off for a second then. What do we want to do now? We want to set up the logic that's going to decide when we're supposed to push more cold gas in and when we're supposed to take pressure out. In order to do that, and this is the final step, we're almost done, by the way. In order to do that, we're going to use these six logic sets here. We're going to have two logic memories. We're going to have two logic processes. And we're going to have two sets of input outputs. We'll do uh, pressure on this side and temperature on this side. So let's talk about the way logic works in this game. We need to control the environmental conditions in this room, right? We know what temperature and pressure it currently is, and we know what temperature and pressure we want it to be. That's a total of four values, right? The pressure we want, the pressure it is, the temperature we want, and the temperature it is. We can get the temperature we want, and or we can get the temperature we want and the pressure we want by using memory. This is like a static variable that you can put down and you can say, oh, it's upside down, my bad. <laughs> and uh, you could say, I want you to stay at five all the time and then it'll give our reading, our math unit, something to look at that will always be five. So let's go ahead and name it. We'll do pink for pressure. So this will be our pressure memory. Um, if I could spell that correctly, that'd be better. And this will be our temperature memory. Now, if we think back to what our gas fuel generator tooltip said, we know that we need a minimum pressure of 20 kilopascals. So that's the minimum we're going to set. The memory is going to be our minimum. And we know we want a minimum temperature of 5 Celsius, which is 278 Kelvin. So I'm going to put, let's say, 8 Celsius. We'll, we'll give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. So we'll call that 283 Kelvin. Right? It's not quite 8, but it's close enough. I think it might actually be 10. Let's go, let's go 281. That should be fine. All right, so now we've set our minimum temperature 
and our minimum pressure, well, let's go ahead and collect our actual pressure and our actual temperature. For that, we're going to use logic readers again. We'll put down one over here, which is going to talk to the gas sensor. And we'll put down another one over here, which is going to talk to the gas sensor as well, but just looking for different values. Let's wire it all up. Definitely need to pack a lot of cables to do this, just so you know. All right, everybody's connected. So let's get this configured then. We're going step by step, remember? So this reader right over here is going to be our temperature reader. And this one is going to be our pressure reader. Perfect. We're, oh, I left that on. There we go. We're now going to tell this to talk to the gas sensor and we want to read the temperature variable. Turn it on. So we can look over there and we see we've got a temperature of 280 at the moment. Very nice. That is currently below our minimum because it's 7.2 degrees. Yeah, and we want eight degrees, perfect. So we know we need to add some heat into the network or rather we don't have to cool it. You are going to look at the gas sensor and you're going to request the pressure variable. Turn you on and now we know we've got 59 kilopascals in there. This is the exact same data we've got on our monitors but we can't pull the information out of them. We have to pull it out of the sensor. All right, but now we know what our actual pressure and temperature is as well as our desired pressure and temperature. What do we do with that information? Well, we do a little bit of comparison. We're going to switch over to the logic compare. I will put, uh, this is my red one. Oh, I'm very thirsty as well, apparently. Oh, whoopsie, wrong side. That's the pressure one. I better go get a drink of water, man. That's going to be annoying. But let's put down our temperature one first, and then we hydrate. All right, but with our pressure and temperature compare units placed down, let's again, you guessed it, wire them in. So let's start with the pressure value. We know that we want to check if the pressure in this room is above the minimum we want. So we're going to look first at the pressure in the room. All right, so if the pressure reader, there we go, pressure, if the pressure reader pressure, mm-hmm, is greater than the pressure memory, which is our minimum, remember, then we want to output a one. And right now that's correct. This is either gonna output a one or a zero, a yes or a no. So right now the pressure in this room is higher than the minimum, so we get a one. We can then use that one to tell these active vents to turn on. Let's set up our compare unit and we're gonna do the same thing here. We're going to look at our temperature reader we're going to check whether or not the temperature in this room is greater than the amount we want it to be. Temperature memory, there we go, and turn that on. And right now the temperature in this room is lower than the amount we want it to be, so we're outputting a zero. If we turn the generator on for a second and spike the temperature in there, there we go. Once it gets over eight degrees, we should output a one on that logic compare unit. And yes, indeed, we are now outputting a one. Okay, but what do we do with that? Well, that one signal is also an on signal. So we can just send that directly to the devices we want to turn on in order to, you guessed it, turn them on. So in order to do that, we're going to use a logic writer for the temperature. Oh, that's upside down, isn't it? Yep, yep it is, of course it is. A little finicky, get that to work. There we go. A logic writer for the temperature, and we're going to do a batch writer for the pressure. And that's just because we're going to be writing it to two things. There's two vents. So a logic writer will write one value to one thing. A batch writer will write one value to many things of the same type, as long as they've got the same name. All right, so now we know exactly what to do. We're just going to wire all this together. You know how this works by now. Oh, look how easy this one is. Lovely. And then we've just got to configure them. And then we're pretty much done. Then it's just about testing it and getting sort of tweaking it till it works, but you're kind of there. So you're going to take in the value, or oh, we should name these, shouldn't we? Yeah, you are going to be our temper temperature writer. This should actually be named coolant, I suppose, but that's fine. And this is going to be our pressure writer. Uh, let's make it batch writer. Keep it consistent. I don't know how you spell that. There we go. All right, so you are going to take your value from uh, you haven't been named. That's my mistake. Your name is Temperature Compare. And your name is uh, Pressure Compare. 
Very nice. All right, so you're going to take data from... Did we have the right one? Oh, we had the right one. Nice. Temperature compare. You're going to output that to our coolant pump, which we should rename. This is a volume pump. There we go. Let's, let's call this the coolant pump because that's what it is, right? This is the coolant pump. This is just to help with understanding. This is our minim, minimum pressure pressure regulator. And let's give this guy a name too, just so we don't get it confused. You're going to be the fuel pressure regulator, also known as a throttle. All right, so you are going to cycle to the coolant pump. You're going to take in data from temperature compare. Right now it's reading a zero. You're going to send that signal to the coolant pump and the value you're going to set is on. So whether we're basically telling that coolant pump whether or not it needs to turn on. Okay, making sense. Then we're going to take in the data from our pressure compare. We're going to send that as to all of the active vents on this network, of which there are two. There we go. And our output variable is going to be whether or not they should be on. Turn that on. And right now you'll see they're going to turn on and they're going to drain the pressure in that room. And the little pressure regulator is going to let air back in. But that's it. That's the logic all set up for the system. Now what we've got, what we've got basically is a system where we'll always have a minimum of 20 kilopascals in here so that I can turn this button and something actually happens. We've got a system whereby if we get over that number, it sucks out all the gas, although I've turned it off. And we've got a system whereby if the temperature gets too high, we can pump gas in to uh, cool it all down. And the volume pump is mostly just there because that pressure regulator does not have a chance in hell to keep up with these two active vents. All right, ooh, ooh, ooh. we're almost at 5C and then it's just gonna keep running. There we go, we have active power generation. So now what we wanna do, right, is turn this off for a second. We're going to want to tweak so that it, it functions. We're gonna to wanna to tweak this system. So we're gonna allow this to pump in one, one liter per second of cold gas. And we're gonna to wanna to tweak that until this number stabilizes. So right now our pressure is escalating. Let's turn on our vents, so they're going to suck out the gas we don't need. And, okay, see now the problem there was that the gas was sucked out too quickly. Yeah, the gas was just sucked out too quickly, that was the issue. Alright, let's, uh, we're gonna have to run this back up to zero. That's okay, it's gonna take a little second for this all to work out. So we need to be able to keep up with that gas, so we're probably gonna put that up to five liters. And then we're gonna have to increase the amount of power generation so that we can increase the amount of, uh, heat generation as well so let's let's tweak this number let's put this number up to 0 0.5 there we go so we, we we've multiplied our power output by five so we should put out about six kilowatts of power now instead of one and i need to just run this until we get above zero again you know what let's try and keep the minimum pressure in here at like Let's go for 60 kPa. But I think we're, the active vents are just too powerful. They're, they're draining it too quickly. Or we need to just push up the amount of uh, power we're generating here. This is the one. There we go. Okay, so now we are pushing cold gas in and we are pulling cold gas. We are not yet pulling the cold gas out. Let's go ahead and increase our fuel rate. Let's go up to 0, 0,8 and see if that does anything more for us. So we're producing significantly more power. And are we stabilizing on temperature? We've stabilized on pressure, but we are getting way too hot. So that just tells me we need to push up the volume pump a little bit. Let's go up to six liters per second and see if that helps. There we go, temperature is dropping. Oh no, that's because it's off. Turn it on. Let's have a look here. So our temperature is dropping. Uh, we need to turn this back on. We are pulling pressure, no problem. Temperature's running just fine. Okay, and it looks like we've got a fairly stable system here. Okay, there we go. We are now running at full kilt. I pushed this up to 2 kPa. Let's bring that down to 1. Uh, that pipe's going to be very full of fuel for a second. And we're just trying to balance it out now. Several days later. There we go. We've got fairly constant generation. So you've got to you kind of just got to keep tweaking these two variables until you get close to where you want to be. So we need more cooling, so we increase the cooling, and then eventually you'll find a stable point. And then as you need more power generation, you just have to tweak it again and again. Caution. 
again, this is a way to get the gas generator running, up and running, using the simplest components in the game. It's not the perfect way to do it, right? There we go, he's running. He's running. It's still increasing, so we need to increase cooling slightly. But we're very close. I think we're like maybe like 22, and we might have a stable flow. As long as it oscillates between sort of like, I don't know, 38 and, and 50, I'm pretty happy. Let's try 21 and see if that stabilizes. Uh, we do still have a net increase in power, so let's try 22, as I said. And we might be even closer. You hold C to just do more micro increments. Alright, so right now we are producing 18 kilowatts of power using virtually no fuel at all. As you can see, that number is trickling down very slowly. And it's running. It's stable. It's not dying. It's oscillating between, let's have a look here, 35 and 42. Yeah. And it's not really moving much further from that. Now we do have it. It is, it is ending up being very slightly hotter each time. So what do we do? Well, it's simple. All we got to do is just push this value up. There we go. And then, so as we increase the flow rate, let's say we set that to 1.1, all we got to do is toggle the, uh, all we got to do is toggle the temperature valve and that'll work as well. If we get up to the really high power production, like over 50 kilowatts, A, we'll need to put down a transformer because it'll blow this wire. Uh, but also B, 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 uh, we can put down our other active vent. We can put it back in the slots and, uh, that'll allow it to keep up with the pressure a little better. Is this one keeping up? Yeah, this one's keeping up. And because the coolant is heating up, we are now, of course, rising in temperature. So we've got to push in more coolant uh, and so on and so forth. And the Ouroboros continues forever. The system is not ideal. It's more set up for uh, bursts of power production, but it does work. All right, everybody, but there we go. We've got a semi-stable uh, gas fuel generator set up. We're currently outputting 18 kilowatts of power. This does require some babysitting. It is very much like a... Uh, I need power, I need to come and turn this thing on, get it running, and it works, but it works. It uses the absolute minimum requirements to get this thing functional, no code, and uh, it's pretty damn close. Of course, there are plenty of rooms for improvements. I'm pretty sure putting the sensor a little bit further away from this vent would be a really good idea. Maybe uh, more central, like right behind these. Uh, making this smaller would also be helpful. But I'd love to hear your comments down below. What do you think of this build? How would you improve it? Um, we definitely need, we definitely need a lot more uh, radiators. They are not keeping up with this current build. Uh, no, as you can see, the temperature is indeed climbing, even though we've moved the, uh, even though we've moved that gas away. And maybe sealing this off would also be a good idea, so that gas can't get here. But yeah, that is my, uh, that's my current and best attempt so far at the gas fuel generator. I'm sure we'll improve it and iterate on it in time. Thank you all so much for watching, and I would really, really appreciate your feedback. So leave your comments down below. We've got a full set of batteries, and look at that. We don't even have to run the damn thing all the time, because it's, uh, you only have to run it when we need it, right? It doesn't have to always work. Uh, but I would love to hear your opinions, your thoughts, your ideas, your suggestions in the next episode, down in the comments. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers. And of course, a huge thank you to our channel members and patrons for this month who quite literally keep the lights on around here. Your support means the world to me. To Garen to Road, Frickin' Friendly Beaver, Lunar Shots, Prath and Barush, Ragnar Skull Crew, Jan the Pan, Big Bird G, Sleep Deprived Sam, CCMD, Hendrik Eber, Depoyo44, Wedgie FRG, Rivo, LCG Canyon Sahar, Kelly Ananas, Adachi, Alan O'Sellahair, Old Man Tater, Knee Cruncher, Riley David, The Senate, Couch Potato, King of Hell, Mel Roman, Charlie Weber, Officer C4, and Mermix. You guys all rock. See you in the next one. Cheers.